But they look, they look big and long. All right, Jeremy. Oh, God. Oh, I got that one. Finally. Oh, that's a good one, too. What's going on, geeks? Listen, I'm telling you, in the late summer, the buzz bait is a bass catching machine. Not only bass, big bass. This is like the jig of topwaters. All right, so Jeremy's gonna fish, and this is a great thing. We're here later in the day. It's just, you know, about three, four o'clock, and Jeremy is fishing a shade line with a lot of laydowns, steep banks, great places, great places to fish a buzz bait from the afternoon until well, well after dark. This is a great spot. So while Jeremy is doing that, I'm gonna to talk to you about some modifications that I do to my buzz baits. Now this one doesn't have the bead at the front, say like this does. Now this, this thing is beautiful the way it's made. I love that little, little bead, really gonna keep the grass out of it. This one, maybe not so much, but what you want to do is you wanna push this blade to get this squeal. And I don't have my snips and my pliers with me, but you wanna push this blade as far as you can. You wanna go ahead and push that rivet all the way up against there and you wanna crimp that rivet down with a good pair of pliers so that it's not sliding. Then you wanna go ahead and snip it off right here and bend this down. We can do maybe a short one day to show you, but what you want is that to be contacted constantly right there with that rivet. Now you don't want it so much that's that's not gonna turn easily, but you want good contact because that's what's gonna create the squeal is the contact between that rivet and that flat spot in the blade. When we talk about tuning a buzz bait, what you wanna do is if this buzz bait is running, let's say it's running off to our left, right? So it's running this direction for whatever reason. What you actually wanna do is just tweak this, this direction to the left so that it's starting to line back up, okay? So you're gonna bend this to the left. Now, sometimes you'll even get roll out of a buzz bait. And what you can do is you can take and twist away from the roll. But 90% of the time, if you're getting roll out of a buzz bait, you're overpowering it. You're fishing it faster than it's really intended or the weight is intended. So if you need it to go faster, you need to go up in size. To skirt or not to skirt, that is the question. 90% of the time, I would say even 98% of the time, I don't skirt. The reason why I don't run a skirt is because I like the lift. I like to be able to fish my buzz baits slower. When you fish them slower, you need to get more lift and that's where soft plastic comes in. Now, I never fish one without a trailer. Never, even if I've got a skirt on. During the summer, a lot of bass are gonna be out offshore feeding on shad. But the ones up shallow are probably gonna be targeting bluegill. That's when I go to my gold blade. You guys have seen me throw this for the past few years. This is one of my favorite. This is the Cumberland Pro. I call it a finesse. It's a one quarter. That's another thing. One quarter is kind of my go-to, especially in the summer. I want something small, something subtle. And a lot of times I'm fishing clear water. That's going to be as natural as can be. And in clear water, late summer, early fall, I'm going to that quarter that's got a smaller blade to it. And I'm going to leave the skirt on. And it's going to be, as you can see here, a bluegill style pattern. That bluegill style pattern, I'm going to put on some sort of natural trailer. So why do I leave the skirt on there and put a soft plastic on? Because I like for it to flare out. So it gives that big round body of a bluegill. Now, I will mix and match when it comes to my trailers. Like I will put this, it's translucent, so it's not a solid pearl. I'll put it in there and maybe put me a little tip of sartreuse on the tails. Very, very little during the summer and very, very little in clear water. Sometimes it's just a little bit brighter and it looks like the white belly. So when they come up and hit it, they get it. The other thing I'll use, especially if we're fishing shade lines like we're doing right now, is I'm gonna fish a yum, 
tiptoed on there. And this is one of my favorites because it's got the white belly, but it's got the green back. So it's very natural and something that a lot of times you can do. And believe it or not, a lot of people won't tell you about this, but if they come up and miss it, you can stop that buzz bait with a toad on. Sometimes they'll turn right around and hit it, especially if you've got a natural color on it. All right. So now we're going to talk about color of the buzz bait and the trailer. I match them up. A lot of times this is kind of the go-to, especially if they're chasing shad, if you're throwing around when the shad are up shallow, like if the shad's spawning or, you know, just it's the most common and it's a silver blade white trailer. That's a just your staple go-to color. The next one is going to be a black. Now, this is a Brazalo, and I love that sound. We'll talk more about when you need sound a little bit later. Oh, by the way, that's a Strike King. The other is, of course, this. This is my Cumberland Pro Lures. You know, guys, this is a quarter ounce. All these are quarter ounces, and it's kind of my go-to. That gold blade, whether I've got a skirt on it or whether I'm just throwing something white or, you know, something more natural uh, like a green pumpkin or a watermelon red. Hey, Jeremy, let me see that for one second. All right, guys, so this is one of my favorites, and this thing gives off a lot of bubbles, but you can fish it super slow. Look at that. It's like a double blade, and this is from Omega Tackle, so it's like a quad braid, but it's like super subtle. That's what I love about it. So coming through this clear water, this thing is awesome. Love that black blade. It don't chip, so it's not just painted. Now, normally this would be one. Uh, I, this is the only one I brought with me, but I put a black trailer on this. So we're kind of mixing and matching here as uh, Jeremy's fishing a shade line. When do I use a noisemaker like a clacker or a bead like this? This thing... Big shout out to my buddy Joey down in South Carolina. He turned me on to them and it's a Brazalo. I always say that name wrong, but anyway, hit is a noisemaker. When the water is muddy, when you're around like super, super thick, submergent grass, heavy cover, dirty water, that's when I'm going to something like this. Listen at this thing. That sound says it all. Now I fish super clear water, and most of the time I don't fish that, at least here on this lake. The water is a little dirty. It does have its time and place, especially over on the Tennessee lakes. But I generally like, and they come in all sizes, what I love about them, they come in all sizes, blade colors. But when you're in clear water, you're in super shallow water, you know, you wanna keep it subtle as subtle as you can. So bringing up a lot of noise isn't what you want. But if you're fishing it over grass, heavy grass, or you're fishing it over some dirty water, like two foot of viz or less uh, over laydowns, that's your bread and butter right there. So let me talk to you a little bit about size, like blade size, weight size. It really doesn't matter. The size of the buzz bait. A lot of times, really for me, it's less about the weight and more about the blade size and how much disturbance you're putting out on the water. You want a bigger blade, to me, middle to late spring, early summer. That's when I throw a big blade size. I will throw a big blade over grass, but if you're in more open water, again, like we are here, you're gonna want to come over slow because those bass in that clear water are gonna come up from deeper depths in that clear water. But I downsize so that it's smaller and natural in the clear water. If we had some wind blowing in here, bigger blade, more disturbance, the better. Let's talk about rod, reel, and line setup for my buzz bait. I actually use the sticks. Now I use a long one. Most people are gonna tell you use a shorter rod, like a seven foot, but this bad boy is a seven four and it's a medium, heavy, fast action surface stick by sticks. Not sponsored, but they make some pretty killer stuff. One of you awesome, awesome geeks out there sent me this Daiwa. It's an 8-1, and I'm telling you, the faster, the better when it comes to a buzz bait. This is the Tatula CT and an 8-1 right-handed. 
And generally, I'm going to put, you know, whatever whatever your favorite. You guys know I love my canine, but in this situation, I'm going to actually use monofilament. Now, you can use braid if you want to with a monofilament leader. I'll use somewhere around about 14, 12 or 14 pound test. And that's pretty much my rod reel and line setup. Now, let's talk about casting. And let's see if I can skip this one. I might have to take this one off, but we'll talk about skipping them. And that is a big deal around boat docks this time of year. Yep. All right, guys, so skipping a buzz bait. Now listen, a lot of you are gonna use it two hands, you know, and skip it under there, but a great thing about a buzz bait. Now this one, and notice the very first thing, I've got it tightened up. So when you're skipping, tighten it down just a little bit, especially if you're first trying. The bigger, flatter toads, or even like a rage bug, are better for skipping. This one's pretty hard to skip because it's got three blades. I would recommend trying to skip like a two blade or something like that. And believe it or not, a little bigger blade is a little easier to skip, but the toads make them much, much easier to skip. Now guys, right there is the key. That is the key to getting a buzz bait bite. You've got to use your rod. It's why I use a seven foot four rod. Now I understand if you're on the bank and you can't do that, but this is a technique that you can easily, easily do. Now watch what I'm about to do right here. Now you can cast with two hands, overhand, side hand, however you want to cast. For whatever reason, for my right, I cast better with just one hand. So what I do, and you notice, I've got that buzz bait moving. I've not even touched my reel handle. So that's the key. The first step is again to stop the buzz bait before it hits the water. I'm stopping it when it's literally that far off the water. So watch again. And I'm raising my rod tip and then I'm reeling. And I'm keeping that constant constant speed and that's how you get your best bites if it's constantly sinking and diving sinking and diving it throws the bass off they don't know what's going on with it but that's the way to start a buzz bait all right guys so you can kind of see this stick up in the water and this is something that i want to tell you multiple casts especially if you're fishing clear water like I fish. Now, if you're fishing something like, say, some dirty water out on a flat somewhere, you can probably burn right down the bank with a buzz bait. But when we're talking about hover, you know, you really want to make multiple, multiple casts around that. And even as I'm going by it, I'm going to make multiple casts as I'm going by it. Because a lot of times, those different angles or it just coming by will finally just irritate that bass into coming up and eating it. The other thing, I know a lot of people want to fish a buzz bait fast, and you can fish a buzz bait fast, but fish it slow. As slow as hit will stay on top of the water and throw a bubble trail. Sometimes when you're fishing clear water, again, you may start like this bank right here. This bank may start out, I may throw it in a foot of water or even six, eight inches of water but as it comes out, it's over 10, 15 feet. And that buzz bait will call those bass up. But if you're going too fast and it buzzes by those large mouths, they're just gonna come up, look at it, not even come all the way up and they're gonna go right back down. So slow down, a lot of times that's gonna let allow those fish to come all the way up, trail it and swallow. And we've watched this on the live scope as well. Yeah. They'll, they'll come about halfway up to it, but it's too far away and they'll just turn yep. around and go right back to yep. where they were. That's right. We've seen it on the live scope. I wish I could show you, but my phone blew up. So I don't have that footage anymore. So a buzz bait in late summer, early fall, guys, it is the jig. You know how you always hear a jig will catch big bass? A buzz bait will catch big bass. It is time to throw them. It's past time to throw them. Uh, they're just a great bait late in the summer. So make sure you're getting out there and you're throwing that buzz bait. I hope these tips help you. I hope they help you catch your first or a lot more buzz bait bass, hopefully your biggest buzz bait bass. 
I know it's something that I love. I mean, I love a buzzbait bite. I have fished it for probably as long as I've fished a spinner bait and I'm old. I fart dust, boys and girls, okay? So, as always, questions and comments in the comment section below. If you guys got any questions, leave them down there for me, even if it's not about the buzzbait. Maybe it's just about this time of year, or clear water, or dirty water, or whatever. You guys know I love to talk bass fishing with you. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so you get the notifications. Watching the videos is the best way to support the channel. And by the way, the second best way to support the channel, if you like these buzz baits, there'll be links in the description. The Tackle Warehouse ones uh, do help. Don't cost you a dime. But if you're going to buy them, use those links down there for me. Help me buy the gas that I need to put in the boat to come up here and make these videos. <laughs> you know, if you can, you can, you can't, you can't. Hey, I just appreciate everything you guys do for me. And Sunday and Wednesday, we are going to get back on track. The house is coming along, uh, but we're going we're gonna to start fishing. As always, you guys rock.